myself, uh, but I will add just basically what is my, uh, my position in Dynatrace. I'm senior product manager uh, in the business analytics solution uh, at Dynatrace and well, um, the first thing is thank you for attending and secondly thank you for Max and Maria to let us, Dynatrace, to explain what we are doing with some of the ideas they provided to us. I'm not going to spoil anything, I will explain it later. Uh, but well, everything has started basically whoa, one uh, year and a half ago. This is uh, our coffee place in our R&D headquarters in Linz, Austria. We are a company that uh, we are based in Boston, but our headquarters in terms of R&D, where the city of Leeds is, is Linz. And we have a nice place that we can have really good coffee. I just spent a couple of days there before coming to Berlin. Uh, in Barcelona, which, where I'm based, we don't have such good coffee machines, so it's a pity. Well, in any case, we got a, a nice conversation with a customer here. We were sitting with, a, with our CTO. This is an old customer of us, a big car manufacturer. And during the conversation, he made one question. Uh, guys, you know a lot of the things I'm doing on my digital infrastructure. You know where are the workloads running, which processes took to other processes, which applications I'm running. You, you know everything because you simply are collecting and collecting data of what, hap what happens there. It should be possible to introduce information about how much energy I'm consuming and indeed how much emissions I'm generating. And we said, oh, well, we, we can figure it out. Uh, we never thought about that. That's the reality. We are quite new on this area. And well, we started investigating and we detected that everyone was talking about that, uh, including regulators. So we thought about, okay, maybe if regulators are looking for that, probably we can help on, on this area. And well, we were seeing many, many other companies were required just to be providing uh, information about what were their emissions in the European Union, United States, everyone is, is talking about that. And we thought, okay, let's figure out what, what can do Dynatrace. How many of you know what Dynatrace does? Well, not bad, not bad. Well, Dynatrace, very, very quickly. Uh, we are one of the leaders on observability and application performance management solutions on the market. We cover different areas from infrastructure monitoring, application observability. Uh, we do also uh, digital experience monitoring, uh, security from the perspective of protection and analytics. And recently we introduced a new platform we released, a little bit of, of, of marketing stuff, uh, that allows us just to build the solution I'm working in, the business analytics solution, and building some automations, keep letting customers to build automations and, uh, and deliver their own solutions. So, with that in mind, what we thought is, okay, as a business analytics solution, probably we can think about of having something that is probably related to that. Let's figure out if we can do that. And then we were shocked by the data. Uh, right now we need to, to solve this because uh, the, first, the first presentation from Lukacs just told me that this is not a top percent. It would be a 5%, could be worse. So 2% of the data center's emissions are equivalent to the whole airline industry. So that is quite shocked because if you come for the digital, you think that you are green, you are okay, and that's not the reality. So we thought about of, oh, what we can cover. Okay, let's focus on the ESG reporting. We can talk about only the environmental part, is what we can provide, probably can provide data about climate change and emissions, and we are only going to focus on, you know, this chart about the scopes, we are going to focus only a scope two. A scope two is usage, how much consuming you are doing from, 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 in this case, the digital infrastructure. So we are going to focus only on the areas we are interested in, basically. So we went to our Johannes Kepler University, University team in Linz, that we have a, a collaboration with them, and we tell them, okay, uh, how can we do that? Because one of the things we face is that many of our, of our customers and many companies are running things in hybrid environments. So they can run things on, on, on the cloud, they can run things on-premise, financial services, they are not going to move their workloads from their mainframes to the cloud, it's impossible. There's no way of doing that right now, probably in the future, but not the case right now. Also, we were thinking about, is it possible to account, account each one of the individual pieces of that digital infrastructure? Can we go deeper to, not only to the hardware in itself, can we take a look to the software? Probably. 
And the last thing, can we think about of optimizing things? We provide solutions of optimizing applications. Why not also including the ingredient of the energy and emissions? So with that in mind, what we did basically was talk to, uh, to, our, to the university and we get in touch with SDIA. In this case, they shared uh, uh, some insights about there is a possibility of transforming the data that we currently are extracting from our customers, infrastructure metrics, to be converted to carbon emissions. And that's what we did. We have this nice guy called One Agent that basically is collecting CPU usage, network, memory, uh, storage, everything in real time. Every 10 seconds, every minute, we're getting that data point into our, because we are providing such information to our customers. And also, the One Agent is able to provide us, for example, the geolocation of where is the, the, the host located. And we are able to provide also what is the CPU architecture that can we transform that uh, into specific data that could be used on, on making calculations. We blend this with external data sources that we are not providing, obviously, is the PUE values and the uh, carbon intensity. And from there, we just put it then into a formula through that methodology shared with SDIA uh, to get emissions and to get energy. We thought about of having also energy because he thought, hey, we are doing the calculations, why not providing both? And then we can figure it out. And then we decided that that was a really good idea for many reasons. This is the final result. As product manager, this is my, my baby. Uh, we released uh, Carbon Impact in April. And what basically we are providing is a way of monitoring uh, in real time, on the in different times, period times, uh, what is the amount of carbon emissions we are generating. We are comparing this against what is the previous period. We talk about of seven days, but we can go to a granularity of one hour because the, right now we will go beyond, uh, below the one hour in the future uh, because we are doing data points every hour. We collect data from all the hosts we have, we do the calculations, we generate data points, and we are exploring them through an application just to make it easier to, to be consumed. In this case, you can see also we are providing some optimization recommendations about how many machines or hosts are just idling. Some of them are, uh, are probably downsizable. For some reason, you allocated more resources for what was really meant. We have seen this many times in many customers. Uh, Docker containers that are massively big, and they are running just probably 1% of their capacity. And the same way, we are decoupling information through data centers and then providing information of, of the accumulative uh, emissions and, uh, and energy consumption. At the same time, as we are the business analytics solution, what we want to show is also describing, uh, we allow customers to uh, collect uh, some business metrics, and ideally, is the ideal uh, scenario will be you are making actions, but your business is growing, and your emissions are reducing, or at least are, are flat. So you are growing, but without not being more harmful to the environment. We can drill down to the host level, through the application, so we can see each one of the hosts, even in hyperscalers or even in on-premise uh, systems, we are able to provide that information of energy and emissions. And right now, not in the application, but through, th through our query language, we are able to extract information at the process level, and in less than two quarters, we are able to, to extract information at the services and application level. If the guys from uh, metrics on applications and services are providing me the data to transform what we are showing at host level and process level to, the, to those uh, le going all the path through uh, the topology of, of our digital infrastructure. So one of the things that we do at Dynatrix is that we, li we like to be customer zero. We do the, what we call drink your own champagne uh, uh, scenario. So what we did is, okay, let's take a look at the, our systems. And that's what happened at, uh, this summer when our own platform was monitored. So we were using our own application just to track that everything was well. And yes, we need to admit it was uh, looking for a reduction in costs. What we found is that we were also getting a reduction, a dramatic reduction on the emissions we were generating at that point, 90%. So it was super interesting because uh, uh, at this case, we have many people happy. The, the ones that are believing that this is important, and the CFO that are reduction, the reduc having a reduction on their, on their bill. But the optimization is at least what we are looking for. We are not looking for, for reporting, because reporting is something that usually customers are just giving up the data they are getting from hyperscalers, and they are, and they are happy with that. Uh, we are not going to discuss this. But we are looking on optimization. Why optimization? Because Dynatrace has been always working on the optimization area in many, many, in many, many areas. But we 
faced only in three areas when we talk about of carbon emissions optimization. The first one is data centers. Data centers basically what, are, uh, what you can do in data centers is just maintaining the workload you are generating, the same amount of energy you are consuming, and you can, well, you can buy more green energy if there was enough green energy for everyone. Secondly, be more efficient on your data centers. That would be an option. You need to do investment or shifting your, uh, your loads to the cloud if you can do. The second level we figured out, it was, okay, let's talk about of hosts and container level. Probably we are able to detect, and we are able to detect indeed, uh, uh, if there are idling machines or they are downsizable, it's just a matter of starting a discussion about, can we downsize these machines to something that is smaller? Are those machines idling uh, as we have data about of who they are, those, those hosts, and who they are running it, who are the owners, and talk to them and say, okay, is this necessary? We can shut down these and forget about and free in that embodied carbon footprint because we don't need it? Uh, or it is because uh, we have um, uh, some uh, SLO to commit, or we have, for example, some retailers are right now facing Black Friday, and they are simply allocating hardware because uh, it will be the end of the world if they stop selling. That's, that's the idea. But the last one, and, and the one that we are right now we are exploring quite extensively with some customers, is at the code level. When we talk about of code level, is being able not only to say, okay, this is a piece of software that we can probably measure how it was, a baseline, and then compare it with the next scenario when you make the code changes. It's about also locating what are the bad guys. Uh, why? Because how many millions of lines of codes are on applications on big enterprises? It's impossible to know which are the ones that are generating more emissions and energy. Why if I can provide that data? If I can provide that data, I can find who is the most generating, and if we do an a, 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 a initial step of, of, of optimizing the code in the way we are doing it, just some of the examples you are going to see on the workshops probably tomorrow, uh, why not applying that and looking for what it is? What is the problem? And also, there is something that uh, we are used to do, is what we know the butterfly effect. You are just at one, uh, you are generating a change of code on one side of your infrastructure, but you know this is a service talking to another service that is another in the other side. What happens is that probably something that you are making good in one side is generating a, a counter effect in the other. And we are able to monitor that. We have been doing that uh, in terms of performance, so a reduction of performance in an area is affecting in another area. We are able to do that root cause analysis basically with the metrics we are using, performance, throughput. Why not adding also what we call energy and emissions on the application performance management? And we want to add this on our, uh, on, on as a new ingredient for our offering to our customers. Thank you very much.